Well hi everybody, a nice day today, a little bit windy, not a lot of sun at the moment but it's a lot better than the downpour we got yesterday, <laughs> another downpour I'm afraid which this had just come back nice and as you can see has taken a right old bashing again, poor old thing but it does keep drying, we'll give it a couple of three days and see how it comes uh, the pond, it's all good. The lilies are still banging flowers out. There's still plenty of flowers coming up. And it doesn't seem two minutes since we was just wishing the summer had just get here. And now all of a sudden we're looking at the end of it. It just seems to have absolutely disappeared really quickly. But everything's good, the fish are good. They're all swimming about nicely. No problems in there. All my water parameters are good, I've checked them a couple of days ago, they're all good. So yeah, great stuff. What I have got to do is, as you know down there, I have got a uh, kill switch. So that if my pond water level drops more than a foot, it shuts my pump off so we don't lose any more water. It's playing up for some reason. I pushed it down the other day and it didn't shut my pump off so I've ordered a new one, I've got a new one on the way I can't, uh, it, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so I'm certainly not going to risk it I'm going to take that out and fit a new one they're not very dear but the postage is doubles the, pl the price of them but there you go, that's one of them things I suppose but that's, that's something I've got to do several other little jobs around the place the little lily it's still chucking leaves up the latest leaf is really nice the latest two they've come up really nice they're good leaves and there's another one just under the surface of the water so there's another one coming up so it's still chucking leaves out and getting better all the time so I've got great expectations for that the plant down here has, if you remember, that's what I took out when I took that other uh, tall growing grass out. It has now filled the basket out. It's amazing how quick these things grow. It has actually taken, uh, taken over the whole of the basket now, so that's doing well. The little leaves, like I say, they're uh, coming up a little bit more yellow than usual. So winter's on its way, guys, which isn't... Uh, anything good to look forward to. Our season, like I say, doesn't seem to have lasted five minutes. Anyway, what we're here to do in this video today is uh, it's all about the new pre-filter. My initial thought of this pre-filter was putting it outside where the water actually comes out of the ground from the pond and into the shed. I initially thought of putting it, putting it out there but to be quite honest that's going to be open to the winter and I like to keep my filter running through the winter if I can so it would have meant building another canopy on the outside there to cover all that in basically to keep it sort of away from the frost and uh, stop it freezing but what I'm going to do or what uh, I've decided to do is if we go into the filter house in here I'll put the light on up this end, I have turned the pump off, the air pump, so it's a little bit quieter in here. Um, up this end, I'm going to stand it right here at the end there. I'm hoping it's going to go in there. I'm going to take this out, this chest of drawers, move the pump over or even round the corner if I have to, and I want it stood there. It'll be inside the shed then, so I've got to repipe for all that. But basically, I think I can get it in that end so it will be actually in the filter house itself which is quite good everything else in here is running well the river's going well it seems to be doing its job I'm not getting much problem with nitrate like I did last year the RDF it's running well it's always going well that thing it uh, it's not a lot of problem that the moving bed it just ticks away all the time just keeps doing what it should be doing I don't really suffer with ammonia or nitrite problems so that is definitely doing a cracking job and everything else is fine so no problems in here at all so it'll be just doing and getting the maintenance sorted out for fitting the pre-filter and doing a little bit of an alteration on the RDF it's all still happening down the shed 
down the big shed. Now there's a lot of wind so I'm hoping we're getting away with it. I just thought I'd tell you about uh, my first big disaster or cock up basically. I'm building this pre-filter before I've started. I bought a sheet of polypropylene um, which is over the back there now at the moment and to build this the insides of this filter out of and I've just discovered that the bins the tubs themselves are polyethylene which you can't weld polypropylene to polyethylene what a good start <laughs> so I've had to order a sheet of polyethylene so that's my first disaster but there you go you expect this sort of thing but that was totally my fault I should have researched it before I started um, I was positive these are polypropylene I'm sure I've seen it somewhere that was made out of polypropylene but I'm totally wrong they're polyethylene so so that's my first big mistake but that's before I've even started but we've got the polyethylene now so uh, I can start to build something up I hope so I'm gonna get stuck in I'm still hard at it I've got the pre-filter it's well on the way now I'm getting that done and I'm learning to plastic weld I'm getting better all the time once you get into it it's not too bad at all and it uh, it's a lot easier than I thought at first I must admit I am slowly getting the hang of plastic welding and it's coming on quite well so I'm quite pleased about that I'm getting uh, getting quite good at it actually although I say it myself but we're still a bit of a mess in here <laughs> with everything that's going on but that's what happens when you get busy what I'm actually hoping is that this uh, filter can be used as either a pressure filter or a vacuum filter it can be used as one or the other so uh, I've got great expectations for that if everything goes according to plan I want to get pushed on I want to get stuck into that really I'd like to get it done and connected and uh, give it a run see how we go so it's quite exciting that is which means actually if you've got a submersible pump you can fit this after your pump and it'll clean things before it'll take all the big stuff out before it gets to your filters which will be a load of weight off your filters but also if you're running a dry in line pump the same as I do you can always use this as a pre-pump filter which is what I'm initially uh, building it for because I get so much muck in the basket of my pump I'm having to clean that basket on the pump once uh, twice a day some days which is a right pain in the butt to be honest so if I can get this up and running and get it working it'll take a load of maintenance off me it'll be absolutely fantastic so I've got uh, great hopes for that right guys I just thought I'd show you I've taken the basket out my pump and this is what I'm getting on a daily basis most of it is lily stuff it's dead stuff off the lilies this is why I am plumping for the pre-filter pre-pump filter basically because I'm doing this every day at least sometimes twice a day but it cuts the flow down big time on the pump once it starts to block so that is the intentions I'm hoping that the new pre-filter will sort that out as you can see there I've got my it's supposed to be 10,000 litres an hour whether it is pumping that or not I really don't know but uh, I've got the pump ready we're now gonna go in the shed and basically we're going to be giving it a test run today which is quite exciting really I'm going to connect it all up and see how it goes keeping our fingers crossed <laughs> I like to bring these things to you guys as uh, I actually do them so you'll be seeing it running for the first time the same as I will so basically what I'm going to do now is get it outside get it by the pond get it all connected up and we'll give it a run and see how things go I shall only be taping the joints up for now um, I won't be obviously solvent welding them so they will be taped up so we might get the odd leak I'm hoping not too bad but I shall only be uh, using insulating tape and just taping them up for now just to give it a run and make sure everything 
is working as it should basically or if we've got any uh, problems then I can get them sorted out. There's all the bends and bits of pipe that I'm going to need to get it connected to my pond. I've worked them all out so uh, I'll get them on, get the filter by the pond, get it connected up and let's give it a run. I can't wait. A little bit nervous but I can't wait. The heat gun that I'm actually using to do all this plastic welding, that's the one, it is uh, 1600 watt, it's one of the bigger ones. I don't, I'm not sure how the smaller ones would work, I can't see that they wouldn't work. This one is quite good, it does heat up really quickly really, so it's not too bad at all. Um, plastic welding, as you've seen in the past, I've not been very good, but I've got to say I am really getting a lot better with it. It's really coming on now and I am uh, doing quite well with it. I'll show you a little bit later on in the video of me doing a bit of plastic welding and you'll see how I've come on as opposed to what I was in the first place. So I've got a lot lot better with it and it's coming on nicely now. Just a little bit of pressure on the welding rod, just pushing it down slightly to help push it into the joint. And off the end. And that's how easy it is. Right, well that's the filter out by the pond. All we've got to do now is get it all connected up. Get it connected up and get it running. Well guys, as you can see, I've got the pre-filter out here and it's on test. The pump I've got on it is 10,000 litres an hour and we've got it under test now. So inside that drum should be pressurised as the water is forced through the drum and it should be taking out the bigger parts either on its way to the pump or just from the pump and on its way to the filter. So I'm going to leave that running now for about half an hour and see how things go. But all's looking good at the moment. I'm quite pleased with it. Don't forget that drum's got to be pressurised or it will hold a vacuum if you're drawing from it. So uh, it's got to be airtight basically, which is the biggest part of doing this filter. The drum must hold air, must hold pressure or it must hold a vacuum. So I'm now going to leave that, as I say it's under pressure at the moment. As you can see it's forcing the water back into the pond. So we're going to see how that goes and then we'll check it in about half hour's time. Okay, what I'm going to hope, for, hope to do here is put this bag on the end of the outflow and just check that there's none of the larger particles getting through the system. So this should catch them if there are and uh, tell us if there are any getting through. So I'm going to slot that onto there and then try to fix it up the top so it doesn't fall off. If you can see with them, my hand in the way. So that's now running through that bag and that will tell us if there's any big larger particles getting through the pressure filter basically. There is a little leak on it but that's on the outflow so that shouldn't matter it's just where I've taped the joint. It is dripping a little bit there. It's where I've actually taped it on the thread so uh, that's not a problem everything else looks good. So I'm going to leave that bag on there as well and we'll see if there's any larger particles in the bag when we're done. And it's just starting to rain, don't you love it? So I'll have to take the camera inside. Okay guys, I'm going to whip the bag off because the bag is only about 10 micron, it will block with the finer stuff. It's slowly blocking, it's still running though. It's still running quite well, but it's slowly blocking. It's been on there about 15 minutes. Which well, should be enough to tell us if there's any larger particles getting through the filter. I'll just give it a little bit longer, but it is starting to block, but like I say, it's only 10 microns, so that is really going to take uh, 
the fine stuff out as well but we just want to see if there's any big bits in it basically so we'll whip it off and we'll have a look sorry if I'm in the way I've got to reach over this pipe okay guys that's all pretty fine stuff in there it was a second hand bag so the dirt around the top was already there I have used it before but I'm not seeing a huge amount of large particles in there at all there's a lot of finer stuff as you can see so we'll see what the filter brings forth but that's quite good there's no, nothing much in there at all like I say it was a little bit stained and brown there because it's an old bag that I've used before but looking down the sides there's no large particles hanging about at all so that's pretty good okay I've brought you around this side and got you on the tripod because I'm going to switch the pump off and open that tap there now the water level usually runs about here somewhere so if air has escaped the water level will rise as it's forcing water into the tub the water level will have risen so if I switch the pump off and open that tap there shouldn't be if the water level hasn't risen which it, I'm hoping it hasn't there shouldn't be any water come out of that tap so I'm going to switch the pump off now and switch the pump off and I'm going to open that tap oh that's excellent absolutely brilliant there's no water at all come out of that tap. That's great stuff. So what we'll do now is, I'll just lift you up a little. And we'll have a look. We'll whip the top off the tub and have a look inside. So if we take this off, take the lid off. Now I'll take you guys off the tripod. And let's have a look inside the tub. Oh, well, that's excellent. You can tell there's been no water in there for the simple reason how it's just pushing the dirt down the mesh. If there'd been water in there, that would have been all over the place. But no, that's excellent. I'm well chuffed with that. Isn't it good when a plan comes together? Okay, guys, if it comes to cleaning this system out, basically what you do is open this tap here so if we open that I have my hose here now I use the hose with a fan on it so it uh, gives the fan and basically just go down the mesh I'm trying to do this one handed go down the mesh fetching it off sorry Patching it all off. I'm trying not to get my camera wet. And it goes out of the hole, basically, where the tap is. And there you go. That's it clean. Dirt in the bucket, use very little water and off you go again so reasonably easy to clean as well I love it well that's it back in the shed now it's back in there for the finishing touches I've got some finishing touches to do the big test will come when we get it connected up and make sure making sure it can take the vacuum from my pump that'll be the big thing but it all went really well I was well pleased with that I do hope you enjoyed watching it, but I'm afraid it's time to say thanks for watching, do take care, and as always, happy ponding.